Amen. 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 I will win the qualifier. I actually boosted the morale, and it gives me confidence that even when I go to Ghana, you know, and um, eventually won. I was just so happy. The feel of elation was just endless. So I guess my teammates and I were more committed than others because before the game, we used to gather ourselves, set ourselves up, like let's go for this. This is the only chance we go because if we don't qualify, this. Generation like us, coach only said has gone. So we just we thank God that we got the opportunities. So we are very happy. The most difficult job we have gone past it because the Wafu, the countries within I mean around the Wafu or within the Wafu are the most difficult countries. If you can if you can age our people like I mean country like Ghana, like Cote d'Ivoire, like Burkina Faso, I think in the nations called proper in Egypt. The, the North African countries, they are easy to come by with. So, going to the Nations Cup, I think we have, just have to prove very well, as I've said. We go the back to the Federation for us to be in Miami 10 days before the kickoff, and that has helped help us uh, tremendously. What it has brought forth. I recall when the NFF settled on Boso, the media came down really hard. But I want to thank the NFF for being steadfast. Thank you. Thank you. I am a believer in promoting and developing and supporting indigenous talent and indigenous coaches. We cannot have overnight success. We want to win, but also we must give our own people, our own players, the opportunity to also help this game grow. And I take it from Coach Bozo that you will keep this team together. You will lead them to the Cup of Nations and also to the World Cup successfully. But that can only be possible if we maintain the same level of discipline that has brought us the Wafu Cup and the qualification. Discipline among the technical group, discipline among the players. You must promote team's spirit. You must promote merit. That these ones carry the potential for the development of football in Nigeria. And I look forward to seeing most of you play in our league, but also grow up to play in the Super Eagles. Let's give them a round of applause. You can sit down, please. A good one there to host our team. Well, victorious team, we call them because they did well. They did exploit at the Wafu B competition that took place in the Nigeria Republic over there in NMA. Nigerian Flying Eagles, they did well winning that particular competition, playing four matches, and they drew one. They won three. They scooped that cup, and now they qualify for the under 20 AFCON that will be coming up in Egypt. That will be in 2023. And also to let you know that the Scrabble team, the Nigerian uh, Scrabble team, went to Ghana, Accra precisely, and they were able to win a West African Scrabble Championship for the fourth time that that uh, competition debuted in West Africa. Nigerian team did well. Team Scrabble, they won nine out of ten awards slated for that competition. Welcoming you on the show, 360 Sports on Trust TV. I am Adini Ajishafe. Well, let to talk about concerning sport this morning, but I'm with uh, all our leaders will be doing justice, so most of the story we'll be looking at. Good to have you. Yeah, good morning, Adini. It's my pleasure to be here, and it's a good way to start with a victorious Eagles. Victorious Eagles as well. We just have to appreciate the fact that the flying Eagles were really victorious over there in near May. I love the fact that uh, well, it, it didn't take long before we celebrated them this time around. At least uh, going to those days where athletes would go for competition, it would take long. In fact, at time we don't even remember them. But this time around, uh, the federal government did me fit uh, to at least uh, welcome the two. And I love the fact that they included the Scrabble team, not just football this time around. Uh, the Scrabble team, who did so well, they won from, if you read it, the ranking from 1 to 10, mm -hmm. they actually won 9 after uh, 10. And that's a very good uh, uh, good outing for Nigeria. There, and you look at the fact that, aside the fact that we won the competition right now in Africa, in West Africa, even in the world, when it comes to Scrabble, 
Nigeria is a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, uh, when, it, when it comes to the game of Scrabble, no doubt about it, we are very, very talented and are very, very good. So, <clears throat> and this is the high time for us to now bring out the best in us for the world to really see how good we are. We are not only to dominate the game of football, we have other sporting activities that we are good at. So, uh, the concentration now, I like what the federal government is doing now, it's not only about football, other sporting activities also that we are good at, it is now time for us to showcase, I mean, showcase it to the world. The same concentration, the same attention, the same financial assistance we are giving to the game of football, we should give it to other sports activities. Then from there, we'll see how good we can be uh, in, this, in this country. And you made mention of something, and it's kind of, it's kind of uh, a bit funny, that it doesn't take the federal government time before the... Um, this time around. This time around to celebrate. It shouldn't take them time also to reward. Mm. They are different between celebrating them and rewarding them. So that they, should they just be different. a public... It should be a public ceremony, and then after that, we don't hear about anything again. Mm. A good one for, uh, for the Flying Eagles, but I think we need to remind ourselves that we used to be the best in Africa when it comes to this competition, Flying Eagles. Mm. We've won it seven times. In fact, between 1983 up to 1989, I'm talking about 1983, 85, 87, and 89, four consecutive times, Nigeria won it back to back to back to back. Also in 2011 and 2015, we won it. Our best performance at the World Cup has been runner up, Saudi 89, where we lost to Portugal. Then also we lost again during uh, Mikel Obi in Time, 2015, yes. Netherlands, we lost to Argentina. So that should be the parameter that we should set for ourselves. Good one, but we shouldn't be so much um, celebrating winning Wafu when we've already won the AFCON before, when we've already been a runner-up at the World Cup. It shows that the game of uh, football at the grassroots is already disintegrating in the country. So we need to at least so up the we game. Need to up the game. And this, uh, uh, this is, uh, I mean, is an avenue for us to bring up the future Eagles. Mm -hmm. I recall vividly, in 1989, the squad we have then, Christopher Inosu, Christopher, ba name Searing Bell, Christopher Ohe, Bawa Philip Osondu, mm. Bawa Abdullahi, Mutiu Adepoju, Samuel Elijah. We have them that from under uh, 20, uh, 20, they transformed to 23 to Super Eagles. And you can see the number of years they played for the Super Eagles because we catch them young, young. as at that time. Ademola Deshino. Ademola Deshino. Names. So you, you, you see, we need to really go back to the drawing board, to the grassroots, to make sure that this crop of players, these beautiful players, talented, committed, hungry, we shouldn't let them just go after this competition. Gradually, we should be progressing them to be the one to take over from the, uh, from the future. A very good one, a very good performance, but we shouldn't get distracted. We still have a task ahead of us, mm. Egypt. We are going there to do what? To do what we know to do best, to win it, and also to qualify for the World Cup. For the World Cup. So the whatever the uh, federal government needs to do, they need to start it now by planning, adequate planning, not the fire brigade approach that we are used to. At least we have something to celebrate when it comes to football this time around. A good one for us. After all, for a while now, a lot of Nigerians have not been happy, but this time around, the, the, even though it's waffle be, the young lads actually brought a smile to the faces of Nigerians. At least uh, they're smiling for the fact that we were able to win that particular competition there in Niamey, Niger Republic. We defeated Ghana. We actually played draw against Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, and eventually lifted the trophy against uh, Benin Republic by winning that game 3-1 there. Congrats to the entire squad and the technical crew led by coach Ladan Bozo and hopefully they will do well by the time they get to Egypt and also win the under 20 AFCON competition that will be coming up in Cairo. Hopefully they can also go to the world and conquer just the way Nigerians have been at least uh, on the line to be one of the best when it comes to youth football in the world. Hopefully we will do well as the events unfold. Now looking at those stories now, not forgetting the fact that the Scrabble team, they were fantastic. Well, we know that football is a beautiful bride always, but really for the fact that they went to uh, Ghana and they were able to win out of 10, I, I see anytime I look at that particular uh, achievement, out of 10 awards, out of 10 categories laid down, they won nine. 
from first to nine. Nigeria, Syria, Leon, Ghana, and two other countries that con competed. Nigeria actually won from one to nine, mm -hmm. best of the best. And in, in, uh, among those nine, you had the former world champion, Jigero Wellington, the, the one that, uh, that actually won the event eventually is Eta Karo, who spoke earlier on with the green uh, uh, shirt there. Eta Karo won uh, 1,350 points. And Ghanaians, Syria Lunas were wondering, how come? Nigeria dominated from one to nine. And if you look at Scrabble right now in the whole world, even the English, English people that actually brought the language to us, they cannot beat Nigeria easily when it comes to this particular sport. So um, I, I wish we can have the Scrabble in our own, in our own form also, mm -hmm. not only in their own, in their own form. Okay, um, Eta did a very good job, and that's why there's no surprise why he won the most valuable player award during the tournament. He did very well. Like, you rightly said, even from the pra from primary school, if you go to our uh, to the primary school education system right now, they teach them how to play Scrabble right from there. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we are used to. And you know one thing about us in Nigeria, uh, we like to borrow a culture that is not really has and, and polish it and, polish and, turn, it it and turn it to our own. And even do it better than the, the owner of the culture. If you are playing Scrabble, there's some words they will give out to you. You like. Is this really existing? You'll be, you'll be doubting You'll it. be doubting that, is this, does this exist? And it does. So that shows that if we put our mind in achieving a particular success, we know how to go about it. Hmm. That is the truth. Scrabble, I give it. I have a lot of my friends that when you're playing Scrabble with them, just be careful. Don't even bother to go and look at the dictionary. No matter to check anything. Once they give it out to you, you have to go there and learn from them because they are the best. We have them all over the country. So it's a, it's a very good one that we need to, to continue doing and see how we can, we can do it best. Good one there. We've been talking about Scrabble and also Flying Eagles. They did well while they traveled uh, to Ghana to complete that competition. Also, Nigeria Republic celebrating the victory of Steam of Nigeria. Uh, the federal government did me fit to appreciate what they did. Now, let's talk handball. Well, as we speak right now at the MK Abela Stadium, handball is ongoing. Also at the Velodrome there, where handballers across Nigeria, they've gathered uh, here in Abuja to compete in the Prudent, Prudent Energy Handball League taking place. Well, let's look at the result. As it unfolded just yesterday, uh, Benway of Buffalo, so that's of Benway State, they won against Seasider Boys 29 to 22. You have Kano Pillars, they defeated Police Machine 29 to 15. Uh, Confluence Stars and Tuja Marine actually played 37 to 27. Uh, safety Shooters 35 19 against Owena King of Undo State. The Defenders, that's a uh, uh, civil defense uh, team, they played 29 29 against Riemann Strikers of Sokoto as Niger United actually had a walkover against Kada Stars and that actually amassed them 10 points in this particular category. Look at that. I'm sure they didn't come. Maybe they didn't come in time or whatever it is. Okay, and I think it's a very good one, especially for the Kano Pillars defending their title to show that, okay, we are here to continue from where we stopped the last season. So a very good one for them. Then also for the Mbenue also, mm -hmm. it's a good one for them to welcome themselves into the competition. Then let's also not forget the prudent energy for doing a very good job. Since 2015, that, the sponsor that of the they took over as the headline sponsor of this competition, they've been doing a very, very good work. So I think if we continue like this, the 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 art attack or the headache that we're having in the game of football will be will be reducing. What do I mean? We have other sport to activities divert. that we can divert to. We spoke about uh, scrabbles. How we made the country proud. Nine. Award out of ten, mm. Af apart from winning the competition, then the ad the handballers also they have a lot at stake if they continue this way. That means if there's any competition in Africa or in the world, we'll be able to showcase our talent. So a very good one uh, for the game of uh, handballers. Then for the sponsorship also a very good one. Then for the Kano pillars, um, I think the Kano state government they are doing something very good. Mm. That's the truth. And if you look at even the um, under. 14 La Liga competition. They we were saw, there. We saw I, I what think they did. Their sports commission, really, uh, even though almost all, all the states in Nigeria they have it, but it seems Kano Pillars, that franchise is really growing. You have it in basketball, you have it in handball, Ball. under 15 La Liga, the main Kano Pillar that team, team that is, has to do with football. They have volleyball team, all Kano Pillar. They will not just add the name of the sport to it. 
so uh, that, uh, that's a very good thing. So that shows that they are going back to the grassroots to make sure that, that they keep the youth engaged. They keep everybody employed. And like you normally say, sport is it's what? It's business. It's business. So it's a business that they are really doing. Business of investing in their people. So I think it's a very good one. I think it is worthy to mention that also. So let's see what will happen by the time the competition progresses. Let's see if they will be able to defend they are tied to because other team also there will be a team to beat. Mm. You can see the the stiff that, competition. A lot of uh, shocking result there. Look at a lot of teams that actually didn't expect uh, uh, to uh, look at Rayman striker. We know how good they are when it comes to handball. They are yeah. they did well against uh, the defenders 29 29 there. And for Kada Stars who didn't show up, it was a good one for Niger United as he got a walkover to Jamarine a private, uh, at least, uh, club. They did well against Confluence Stars of Kogi State. Uh, well, even though they won by 37 to 27, police machine, what happened to their machine? Maybe they the machine doesn't have, enough, doesn't have enough, <laughs> enough, enough bullets to continue Good firing. Word, yeah. <laughs> now, let's look at the women's uh, team. As, again, after performing their own games, let's look at the result. They are Rima Queens 31 against uh, Bender Dynamos. They, uh, they did well, as their men are performing well. Uh, the women also did well. They are 31 29. Safety Bay they actually won against Seaside at the 7 to 26. Emo Grasshoppers, 26-23 uh, against Benue, Benue Queens. Adorable Angels, 20. And you have Plateau Peacocks, actually won 34 to 20. While mm -hmm. Defender Babes also, they walk over Kada Queens. Seems uh, the team from Cardinal State, the Kada Stars, and also Kada Queens, they're not there yet. So mm -hmm. both the male and female teams actually had a walkover uh, right now. Defender Babes and also Defender uh, Niger Safety, rather. They actually won 10 nil against them, having a walkover. A good one for those teams. Yeah, and a very good one and competitive game between the Rima Queen and the Bende Dynamos also. You can see 31, 29. Also, and the Himo Grasshopper. <laughs> the names, and, right? You know, we, we have a funny, a funny name of giving our... Uh, and, and ball, and ball, 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 ball spikers. spikers. You know, Himo Grasshopper, where well, it's something they want to be identified with. You know, Grasshopper hops. Definitely. As they play handball, they also hops, hops. around. That's so, why they name their team. Okay. You see... Uh, are, you their, I, are you their consultant? No, at least I guess I have to. <laughs> <laughs> plateau peacocks. That was, if you look at the plateau, uh, peacock is kind of... Uh, what kind of... Uh, Border is uh, a bit uh, popular there, so they have to add it to the name. In a lot of ways, just to create name for the teams. Yeah, it's an identity, and which I think it's a very good, it's a very good one. Something that you identify yourself with, based on your state or your culture. Mm. A very good one. Seeing them also doing what the guys are doing well. Good one there. We've been talking about handball, where uh, Prunet Energy handball competition is taking place. Uh, well, to let you know, just recently, the National Division One volleyball also took place, always giving you all these stories when it comes to 360 sport. We're making it all round to let you have a feel of handball right now, where the men and the women, they've been playing, and teams have been showing their classes. It started like a joke, and now the continuation of that particular event will continue to unfold as we bring you more concerning those games. Now let's leave handball aside. Let's talk about football this time around. We are LMC, the league management company. That is the body that administers football in Nigerian league. Right now they've granted, well, the opportunity for Wiki Tori to go back to Tafar Balewa Square, or rather stadium, to play their games. They were right, uh, earlier removed from, that, uh, from playing at Tafar Balewa Stadium. But right now they've been given the provisional approval to go back home and enjoy their football. Well, for security concerns, they had to write a letter to LMC to show that, yes, we are ready, we are more fortified, we are really uh, sorry for what happened in our first, uh, those games that actually got us being uh, given that particular not to play at home. But now, we are back from Kaduna to Wiki, to Bauchi, so they'll be enjoying that home support from their fans. Okay, and I'm sure also the LMC, they've done their own um, assessment, assessment mm. to be sure that truly they are ready, so that we're not going to have a repetition of what happened before and, and when the league started we are all applauding all the things that we are having each free uh, incident mm. hooliganism issue in the games of in the games of the local football but along the line when the competition became very 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 tough and competitive and we started seeing the other side of the uh, supporters and the fans based on inability of the organizer to provide adequate mm. security because that is what we just need adequate security if the security, not maximum not 
As in, no, no, we can <laughs> you know, we're talking about Nigeria as a whole, do you have the maximum security? Don't mm. let us go into that. Just adequate, not maximum, okay? If they have been overpowered, it's a different case. But when you don't even have any on ground, it gives room for people to perpetrate whatever they want to perpetrate. So it's a very good one for them, but they should have it at the back of their mind that a repeat of this, they should even take them to Kaduna, which is very close to Bauchi. Mm. Probably they should take them to... Far like, away, far away. Like Maiduguri. Or down, down, uh, south, south. Down, down, south, south. Yeah, and also, I think the LMC should review the issue of the banning them from playing in their stadium. They should go also with reducing their points, maybe three or six points. That will send a signal because, uh, you know, as a kid, when, you, when we are growing up those days, if what your parent does is anytime you do something wrong, they will beat you. You get to a stage that if you do something wrong, before yeah, they even beat you, you even, you even turn your body and mommy, sorry. That means because you are used me. to it. You are used to it. So it's like the, uh, the local team, they are used to banning them from the stadium. Let them bring in another male, strictly one that probably, if we have this issue again, three or six points will be deducted from your team. You know, if that happens to you, you're already swimming in the relegation battle. I think they need to be more uh, Andy when it comes to punishing them. LMC should just show more high-handedness when it comes to running the league concerning all the airing clubs that have been at least causing some issue concerning Nigerian Football League. Well, right now, Wiki Torres are back home. Let's see what they'll be doing at the Tafar Balewa Stadium as they are rejoicing or being given that provisional opportunity to play back at their home stadium. Now, let's quickly run through some two transfer story. But before we talk about the transfer, let's talk about the manager that had been appointed by Borussia Dortmund after separating themselves from Marco Rose. Just yesterday, this came out that they've appointed Edin Tazic as their head coach, talking about Borussia Dortmund, who plays over there at the Sigma Iduna Park. Congrats to Edin Tazic. He was there before. He actually won them the every poker cup. And right now, he has been a manager that knows the rudiment of activities over there. Uh, with Bo Borussia Dortmund. So hopefully he has a lot to offer that particular club. Let's see what he would do after Dortmund actually separated from Marco Rose for not winning any trophy during the season. Although right now they've gotten so many players uh, that will be joining them and hopefully they will do well in the next line of action. Well, let's talk about Chelsea now. Chelsea recently, they had issues, but right now that has been settled because Todd Bowley is right now very, very close to taking over fully because the government will be announcing any moment that he has taken over Chelsea after uh, finalizing everything that it takes to get the consortium to take over the Blues done. Well, uh, a good news for Chelsea fans, and I hope you will try to continue from where Abramovic stopped. Mm. Abramovic brought the fame that Chelsea they are enjoying right now since he took over. He has won them everything, and he has a policy that we've been talking about here, times without number. He has a policy of giving you the free hand to, to operate. operate. He will give you the resources needed. The question is, oh, I want you to win at least two trophies for me this season. What do you need? I need social striker. Go and get it. Money, it's never Your a problem. problem. Mm. So they should try as much as possible. You know one thing about uh, English Premiership? The next season is not going to be about the top six again. It's going to be about the top ten. That is the truth. And once you're out of the top four in the season, before you get back to that top four again, go and ask us now mm. what they've been going through. It's been very tough. Go and ask uh, Manchester United what they've been going through. So if Chelsea is not careful, because about four players are leaving this season, to get their replacement and to blend them will be difficult. So that means next season may be tougher for them than they expected. So the new owner should try as much as possible to continue where Abramovic stopped. Mm. Don't prioritize. I'm not saying the purpose of doing business is to make profit. Don't go the Asna way, way. that for over 10 years. Or oh, don't go Man U way, right? <laughs> what's, the, what's the difference between Man U and Arsenal? Oh my goodness. Because if you look at the last time. I'm very sure a lot of Arsenal fans will be like, what did we do to these people? But really. We are telling really, them the reality. But they really made a lot of money during Arsene Wenger's time. Yeah, they, they've been making money. Up to now, they're making money. But it's they have that they are very the shrewd uh, about spending the money. And that's the result they get because at, at times, when you have the money and you don't even spend the money uh, in a way that you can accrue more 
or better still make yourself happy because that's what is happening right now. Arsenal, man, you or, or the issue of uh, spending money or holding down those money without spending it judiciously, uh, 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 unquote. Now buying the right players and they're the good coaches that will be not that will be good enough to manage those players very well because it seems things are always changing after buying these players. Well, <clears throat> things are changing when buying the players because the coaches that they've been having for the past three, four years mm. have not really been the coach that they do really, really need. They need a mature coach this time around. Both Asna and look at what happened to Tottenham. Look at the, uh, the way Kane rediscovered himself. Kane has been written off before. Look at what he started doing. So I think they should just be ready, but they should not put their hope high against next season. Chelsea may find their way where Manchester United and Arsenal fans are currently. You're actually wearing blues uh, clothes, so <laughs> automatically it shows that uh, you are of the blues. Well, good word there. Well, Ali Peters has been the one talking on 360 Sport on Trust TV. It's been a wonderful time. As we always say, that sport is business and fitness. I am Adini Achishafe. Thanks for watching.